Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming in, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia, Gosford, actually. I um, appreciate all your likes and comments and on both channels, um, getting good feedback from the religious community and the not the, just the secular community. Um, thank you for your support, and I appreciate it very much. <clears throat> Proverbs 24, verse 30. And a lot of us have had people in our lives that have been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. But by circumstance and things that have happened, they just haven't been able to keep it healthy and make it. Um, unfortunately, if you're at the stage of life that I'm at, you have to let them go. <laughs> Um, not because they're bad or not because they can't move on and do something better for themselves. It's just because circumstances weren't worth um, fighting for because the situation wasn't necessary. And sometimes we find ourselves in these places where our place in life is different to the person that we're with and the person around them. And we try and force things that we shouldn't. It's just not you know, meant for us. We we had a great time. We have great time. Um, I always do, but it comes to a point where you've got to be real and you've learned about relationships and whether they're working or not, and you just say, well, thanks for that, and take your stuff and go. But whether people learn from that or not, it's up to them. You, you cannot um, help people to see what they need to learn in life, you have to learn for yourself and do the best that you can and be the best that you can and, and that's all there is to it. It's a it's a matter of survival. It's every man for himself, unfortunately. If you've done nothing wrong to these people and they're making out as though you have, man, that's a problem. It's a problem for them. 24.30, I went past the field of the slacker and by the vineyard of the person lacking judgment See, judgment is paramount. How you perceive and see things is critical. It not only plays on the part of your mental health, it plays on how your relationships work, whether you're perceiving things correctly, are you making the right decisions, and all of this has a ripple effect through the whole of your life. If you're in a relationship with someone and they're lacking judgment because they're slack, they're not examining them, examining themselves the right way. They've been brought up with a grandiose mentality. Um, they, their intelligence has run away with them and they've now got this blind side about them. They seem to know everything about everything else except themselves. Uh, they, they impact the people that are closest to them. I've seen all this. They try and have a relationship with somebody near them. And they're all over it and trying to wreck it. They're selfish. They're self-conceited. They've got narcissistic tendencies that they're not even aware of. Um, they they have sulking moment. They'll sulk, whine, whinge, complain about the people closest to them, undermine the people closest to them. And if they're going to do that to the people closest to them, what hope have you got? They're slackers. They're not doing the work in the field, in their field, in their life. The field is your life. It's your mind. It's your body. It's your soul. It's your lungs. It's your heart. It's your kidneys. It's your liver. It's your spleen. It's your gallbladder. We have to do the work to look after ourselves. It doesn't just happen. Our mental health, the people out there that are just wrecking their mind every day, just wrecking their mind. They haven't got the answers. And they're just lacking in judgment. Their judgment's atrocious. They take you out if you let them. If you're in the dark like they are, they'll just take you out. They'll just triangulate you and take you out. But if you're in the light and you can see what's going on, they don't know what to do. It sends them into derision. They start attacking each other. So sad. And then um, they've got thorns growing up everywhere. I mean, how clear can the Bible make it? Thorns and thistles cover the ground. They're covered. People aren't going to accept 
these people's fawns and thistles and the nonsense and rubbish that they bring up. They don't listen. They don't want to fix anything. They let things go until everybody's burnt out and you have to tell them to go anyway. They blame you for the fawns in their life. No, take your fawns and sit on them. Get a fawn in your ass and see if that smartens you up. You know, you're trying to do the right thing by these people. You don't miss a beat. and You're dealing with this nonsense and rubbish and immaturity and silliness grounded on delusion and fantasy and you're trying to have a relationship and you're just burning out. Your tolerance is just going, what is going on here? Until somebody comes up with some fantastic solution that um, you wouldn't wish on your enemy. Just don't understand. I just do not understand where the mentality in society today is gone. They lie. They talk themselves up. They, they just try and mirror what they think you want to hear so that you'll keep them around. I've had them say, I won't do that again. I'll do better this time. Several, you know, I've seen it over and over again and they just go into derision. They've got thorns coming out of them everywhere. They've got thistles covered all over them. They're covered in thistles and cobwebs, you know. Their stone walls are broken down. They've got no boundaries at all. This is the problem. They don't know how to set boundaries up about around family members and things that are all over their business because they've allowed them into their business. What makes you think for one minute if you've broken down the walls so that these people can come barging in that all of a sudden they're going to stop? I've had these women have to padlock the bedroom doors to keep these zombies out bashing into the doors, trying to get into the bedroom. I'm not kidding you. Come and get us food. And this is in more than one case. And these people, you know, they're in the middle of making love and stuff and they just they just look at you with a blank look. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. They're locking the doors of a night. I'm thinking, hang on, is there more going on here than I realize? Is, somebody gonna, is there a chance that somebody could get killed? This is how bad, <laughs> this is how it gets. You've got to see the funny side to it. And I observed and took it to heart. And I looked and I received instruction. Right? I wasn't ignorant. <laughs> I was watching all this. You get better at it the more you see of it. And I thought, no, I'm not going to be pricked by their thorns and thistles. And too bad if their walls are broken down. Mine ain't. Mine is still up. And I got instruction, you know, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and need like abandoned. You cannot, you cannot be asleep. You cannot be in the dark with all this going on around you. Look, you've got toxic people that are coming in to do damage. If you've got no boundaries, they'll come in, they'll befriend you, come in, and then try and break you down. But if you take this to heart and you're observing it, right? I always said I observed, I observed. This is a scripture. I didn't, you know, this is just a scripture showing you how to live. I observed all this and I was watching it and I kept my walls up and I looked and I received instruction. Don't attach, don't attach. Be the best man you can, but don't attach. It's not going well. And you'll notice these people are asleep. They're in a slumber. They're not able to get a light perception, perspe pers yeah, perspection um, or perception on the situation. They're just folding their hands. To, they've just made up their mind that they're right. The other person is wrong. The other person, I'm just watching going, how on earth has it got to this? And unfortunately, and it's true, then they, you can ask them, go and ask them, are they in poverty? Is it like someone's robbed them? Huh? These people are unable to prosper. 
because they don't choose to. If you can't prosper in your relationship life and you're trying to take people out that are trying to do you good and bless you, how are you going to prosper in the rest of your life? I'm not saying this. This is the Bible. They're just in the dark. They just think they're right. But look at the fruit of their lives. They'll tell you, I've been robbed before, I've been abused before, I've had all this before. Well, maybe you want more of it. I don't know. Do you? Do you want more? Because being in a good place didn't have any value. So maybe the toxicity is what they need. They go back to it, back into the toxicity, back into the thorns and thistles. Yeah, where they're lacking judgment and nothing works out and they end up with all their money wasted and everybody's taking it and, you know, they sit there and go, money ain't, you know, one in particular, money money isn't important. Well, what are you working 30, 40 hours a week for, you fool? Wake up. you got thorns and thistles and everything all over you because you've taken down your boundaries. Listen. Why didn't you listen? Put the boundaries up and get some people in order and you'll all start to prosper. The poverty will start to go. You're cursing yourselves. You're walking around asleep thinking you know everything. No, no, you're bringing poverty on yourself, you're robbing yourselves and you have needs like abandoned. You, these people start to think that they've got to steal. They lose, their, they lose their identities and they've brought it on themselves. They've got nobody else to blame but themselves. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Gosford the Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for joining me and bye for now.